Hello, this is First Fire Non-Assault Move. Welcome back to the 45th episode in the War in the East series. Let's get a situation report. It is now the second week of February, and what we're looking at here is the beginning of the Germans' turn for turn 87, second week of February. We went about and executed turn 86 off camera. There were only a few significant actions that took place during turn 86, so I just wanted to give you an idea of the position of our forces before we go about and do our moves and attacks for turn 87 so that you're not wondering why for instance some of our Panzer Corps are located where they are now because we did a lot of logistical movement and we had a few breakthroughs minor ones on the Soviets front and you can see what the Soviets did in reaction to that so we have an attack Talon in you can see that during the first week of February, turn 86, we did not take Talonin again. <laughs> so where we had some decent success was right around where 2nd SS Panzer Corps is now operating with supporting infantry divisions. We had a little rupture in the Soviets' front here, about 20 to 30 miles wide. And this is after the Soviets did their turn, and they have pulled back. They are withdrawing quite a bit the past couple of weeks in large parts of the front. So we had a little breakthrough there, and the Soviets obviously did not like that. And we can see that they're already pulling back from Velikai Luki, where they were very reluctant to give any ground. They kept coming adjacent to us over about a month and a half. So down here, we did uh, the 1st SS Panzer Grenadier Division, LAH, has arrived to be attached to 2nd SS Panzer Corps. So they will contribute, this Panzer Grenadier Division will contribute, along with two other infantry divisions that were with it as part of the reinforcements, and they have been assigned to local infantry corps. And if we move down, we'll talk about the repositioning of our Panzer Corps and the general state of them in, in a second. Again, the Soviets moved a couple of their formations through a gap in our line, and we're surrounding them now, and so we will destroy them this next turn. And if we move down a little further south, really the, the two actions were up around north of Smolensk, and here where we had a breakthrough in the Soviets' line, north of Stalino and then south of Stalino, a significant breakthrough we achieved. And there were straggler Soviet formations here that we were thinking about cutting off, but it looks like they're getting away. But we are adjacent to Stalino, and I'm surprised they are not stacking up to defend Stalino, but I guess it's wise since we will more than likely be able to surround Stalino this turn. So very likely we can kick this tank core out of Stalino in the second week of February and take Stalino uh, in mid-Feb 1942 while there's still snow. That's great. And you know what that means? Next objectives obviously will be Rostov and Voroshilovgrad. Another two cities definitely within reach. Probably not within the time frame of snow before mud arrives, but Achievable objectives in near future ops. Gorolovka and Makivka will definitely fall as well in the next couple of weeks. Game time. So those are the significant developments from the last turn. Let's talk about Panzer Corps. All right. So we can't rail every Panzer Corps. Unfortunately, really, a Panzer Corps takes up almost our entire rail capacity each turn. We did rail up one, which one has all of its, it's probably, yeah, I think we railed up the third. So we have the third Panzer Corps and the 39th positioned here. So we, we bit the bullet and we decided to move the 39th and the 3rd, they were positioned down here right around a little south of 24th Panzer Corps. So we burned a lot of fuel, but 
I'm, I'm pleased to see that the Panzer divisions that we did move over land are at 80%, so that's pretty good. And the ones we had on rails are in the 90s. So that's not bad. So we have the 3rd, the 39th, and the 36th is right here. No, that's not the 36th. Where is your headquarters? Why are you showing your headquarters? That's right there. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm getting good. A little tripped up by some of the highlights. Okay, so, yeah, so 36 is here as well. So 3rd, 39th, 36th, 37th, and 38th Panzer Corps are all here. So, and we include the 24th Panzer Corps. There are six Panzer Corps in this region, all grouped up. So what I plan to do is definitely move 24th Panzer Corps to the north into Army Group Center's area of operations. And one more. It will probably be the 36th Panzer Corps, part of 2nd Panzer Army. We'll reassign both of those to either 3rd, I think it's 3rd Panzer Army. We'll find 3rd Panzer Army. Um, I'll find it off camera, I'll point it out. But regardless, what we're trying to get at is we're going to reposition, continue to reposition our Panzer Corps in preparation for 1943. So six Panzer Corps right in this area of operations is, is, is a bit too much. We want to give Army Group Center some combat power with at least three Panzer Corps, possibly four, for 1943. Because there are opportunities, I feel, to do some damage to the Soviets in this sector where they have a quantitude of their forces built up. And if we just look a little further south, this is where we have the 57th Panzer Corps and 14th Panzer Corps. So there's two already in Army Group Center's area of operation. And if we start to include the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, which will have eventually Totenkopf, 3rd SS Panzer Grenadier Division, along with, again, two infantry divisions, so we're getting more reinforcements. And do I have to continue? Did I get everybody off the rails last turn? I believe I did. Yeah. So that's definitely a full-fledged Panzer Corps with three strong SS Panzer Grenadier Divisions, along with some supporting motorized brigades. The 1st SS Motorized Brigade there, and the Latvian SS Motorized Brigade, and a SS Cavalry Corps. So we're going to try and make this a pure SS uh, Corps with the supporting elements. Because we're already at... Oh, stop it. That's not what I wanted to do. Not you. I wanted... Here you go. Oh, I already have it out. So, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're going to strip. I have to do some more. Obviously, this is the beginning of the German turn. I haven't done any moves whatsoever. I think I chased off partisans in the early going of this turn. Other than that, no uh, reassignment for command and control and supply with core headquarters. And I haven't done any other moves. So... So getting back to the to the point, we'll have the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, the 30th Panzer Corps, the 14th, and the 57th. So maybe I will just move back the 24th Panzer Corps. Because that would give us 1, 2, 3. 30th is light. It just has two, a Panzer Division and a, a motorized division. 24th, I think, only has four divisions yeah in total so that's pretty strong 14th is definitely strong 57th is decent as well that might be an adequate allotment for army group center 
as far as Panzer Corps go. I'll have to think that think about that. We'll still have mud turns during mud conditions where we'll use the railroad capacity. So we don't have to get we don't have to reposition our Panzer Corps completely before mud arrives, but I want to get ahead of the game and limit all movement during mud turns as much as possible. Don't want to burn fuel. So yeah, we're going to do some more logistical movement with our Panzer Corps. I don't know if we're this is really where these two Panzer Corps are going to end up. I just wanted to get them out from the deep south and move them up into a better area so that they can get into attack positions easier once we decide where our Schwerpunkt is going to be. No, obviously, we're going to attack Stalin and attack and secure Stalino. It's definitely where axis of advance is going to take place in this sector here. And that's about it, I believe. So I'm going to go about moves and attacks, and I will be back. All right, I'm back. Moves and attacks complete. Let's get a situation report. Right off the bat, Talonin has stood tall once more. Look at the combat resolution. We did reduce their fort levels down by one. Steadily grinding down on the defenders of Talonin, but still they hold out. Maybe next week. That seems to be the theme for Talonin. Maybe next week. <laughs> While we have the attack markers up, let's look at the attacks that took place in the northern part of Army Group North's area of operations. We do have a bridgehead over what I believe is the last river network uh, in front of Leningrad. We're well across with the bulk of our combat power. 56 Panzer Corps is across. Have them right here, as well as our supporting infantry divisions. And there's a little gap right here where we have a supplementary, supplementary effort to the south, a little ways to the south of Leningrad. That's just to keep the pressure on the Soviets and not allow them to pull forces away from these sectors and plus up the defenders in front of Leningrad. So looking okay here. How many miles are, are we away here? One, two, three, four, five. We are 50 miles from Leningrad. Soviets are very strong, dug in, strong infantry corps, but we will displace them. The intent is to drive north and east, reach some of this rough terrain where the Soviets definitely will be dug in. We'll have to brute force our way to the Gulf of Finland and isolate these forces and hopefully get a pocket with the Gulf of Finland forming the northern part of the pocket and destroy the Soviets rather than digging them head on because that that is a foolish thing to do all right so further south so Talonin, army group north here further south again we are keeping the pressure on and the soviets have been withdrawing along this sector all the way from Peskov down to velikai luki and velikai luki to smolensk so we're trying to catch up moving adjacent to them as we can and let's look at how the front is shaping up Still a slant, north furthest progress east is down in the south, and then it's an angle all the way up to Army Group North, but we are slowly starting to tilt that into a straight line. It almost looks like a straight line now. All right, moving down. So Velikai Luki, the Soviets have given up uh, given up trying to take back Velikai Luki, I don't think they really had any designs or thought that they would be able to accomplish that because we are definitely of equal combat power, if not greater. Had some superiority over there. So they have pulled back, and we are now pursuing them into this rough terrain. And south of Velikai Luki, same could be said. Soviets have pulled out and really withdrawn uh, to a further line east backing up to Rizev, and we are now coming abreast to them. Where we had that breakout, it's they have now, the Soviets have now 
retreated out of that uh, potential um, uh, exploitation that we're going to have on their front to the to the north of uh, Viasma. But now, Viasma, we're almost at Viasma as it stands with our pursuing infantry divisions. So second, SS Panzer Corps is grouping up. They moved a little south. They were poised up here towards more pointed more towards Ryzev. Ryzev, now we're looking to move north of Vyazma and get another rupture in the Soviets' front. The Soviets are just not able to contain the Germans uh, across the front. There are multiple locations where we're going, we're getting these little ruptures in their front and little breakthroughs. We're going to try and achieve that here. So looking at Vyazma south, we're trying to bait the Soviets a little bit through this gap and then close it, pinch off another three to six of their formations. Maybe they're learning their lesson, maybe not. They have two tank corps and a cavalry corps. Those are usually the types of formations they've been pushing through these gaps. So let's see if they try it again. So further south around Bryansk to the east of Bryansk, Establishing a defensive line, moving up adjacent to the Soviets as they withdraw. Backing towards Tula again, withdrawing east. So further south, we're looking at Orel. We are now adjacent to Orel in strength. And we did some hard fighting to get a bridgehead over which river is this. The Oscar? I think that's the Oscar River. Let's get rid of those. The Tuscar River. So now we have a bridgehead. Where are we? Right here. Across the Tuscar. Was I in the wrong area? I lost my bearings for a second. No, it was a Tuscar. So we have all of our Panzer divisions and motorized divisions of 57th Panzer Corps. Well, do we have any in reserve? I don't think so. Yeah, we do have one in reserve back here. We may move them up a little closer. So this is a, re we have a reserve Panzer division here, but we do have a bridgehead over another river network that is fronting Orel. So Orel is in imminent danger of being taken. That is another objective of the Germans that we will have in our pocket, hopefully in the next week or two. Second week of Feb, more than likely, it's going to be snowing in the next couple of turns, so that could happen. While we're in this sector, we did move up. We railed up two divisions. These were from the 24th Panzer Corps. We detached them, railed them up, using up most of our railroad capacity, and assigned them to 30th Panzer Corps. So 30th now has four solid formations under its command and control, and we will want maybe commit them to the attack in and around Aurel, but I think we can take Aurel without having to commit the 30th. We already have the 57th across. That should be more than enough. We're not seeking any widespread breakouts at this point of the year because mud will be approaching, and I don't want to get stuck in with Panzer divisions strung out, seeking one final encirclement. We may be curbing, curbing our enthusiasm a little bit with breakouts at this point in the year. But still, we will take advantage while we can, and we will do that against Orel. So from Orel to Kursk, it's kind of a mess. The Soviets are holding in place in some uh, locations and then withdrawing in others. So this is jagged front here. We're moving adjacent to them where we can. We really don't need to attack any of these Soviet formations that are falling back. Let them fall back, and if they don't, we'll just get around them to the north of the south as we threaten Orel. And then further, down by Kursk, we are now up adjacent to Kursk. There is the river, the Saman River, that is going to... That Kursk will have as to its advantage, defensive advantage. It's like almost perfectly set up to be defended from any attacks west to east. Yeah, the Tuscar River and the Saman River right here, right in the bend, right in the, the fold of these two river systems. So we're going to have to 
look to achieve a breakthrough, which we almost did to the south of Kursk. If we want to displace these forces the Soviets are using to defend Kursk and or break out around Orel, that could be a 1943 spring operation. But still, we want to get our forces up adjacent in strength against both of these major cities because I'll show you what happened further south. We have Belgorod. Well, it's going to be, we'll, we'll hold that thought. So from Kursk to Belgorod, we are just continuing to put the pressure on the Soviets wherever we can. We had a multitude of route results and shatter results against the Soviets. So now there is another gap with very little for the Soviets to patch up. There are less and less forces the Soviets have to patch up these gaps we create across the front. And eventually they are going to run out of troops to do that. We should hope. <laughs> so around Belgorod, we're well past Belgorod now. Well, 10 miles past because this has been a stalemate for a while. So we're over the river, no longer using it to our advantage for defensive purposes. We are going on of the offensive. Same could be said east of Kharkov. We're now across this river, pushing up against the Soviets, not letting them get comfortable and attacking where we can so they don't build up those fort levels. Did I miss... A deployment of our Panzer Corps. No, 57th and 14th were here. It was the 30th that we built up. Okay, so I just didn't want to miss that. So moving to from Kharkov south, we have our defensive line established. We now have moved the 3rd and the 39th Panzer Corps up against the front where we are seeking to have a potential breakout to the north of this industrial region, Stalino, how do we say that? Makivka and Gorolovka. This industrial region, oh, let's get it out of the way right now since we're looking at it. We brute forced attacked Stalino and took it in one shot. It was a massive attack. 116,000 of our own forces against only 8,000, but it was a fort level 3 and a strong core. I think it was a tank core. So we overwhelmed the defending forces in Stalino, and now Stalino is ours in the second week of February, which is fantastic. So we're going to attempt to do the same things to Kursk and Aurel once we get, once we assemble the forces, the necessary forces to do so, threatening the flanks to the north and south of both of those cities. All right, so looking a little bigger picture, we have a radar, two Panzer Corps here with some strong supporting infantry divisions that are starting to assemble. And we have the breakout south of Stalino. Whether we brute force attack Stalino or not this turn, we definitely have a serious threat in their rear area, well east of Stalino threatening the flanks to roll up and potentially get an encirclement. Very unlikely it will happen before mud sets in, but this is a nice chunk of Soviet forces to encircle, and we have the combat power to do so. We have three Panzer Corps down here, the 37th, 38th. I think we reeled up the 31st. Yeah. 30th. Definitely the 37th to 38th, and there's one more. I think we took the... Th it was a th is the 36 in here? I'll, I'll, stop, I'll stop digging through here. But there's ample combat power to the south of Stalino, and then north between Kharkov and Stalino, where we could get an encirclement, start to draw, draw up plans for an operation of that magnitude. Don't think it's going to happen before mud hits, but it doesn't hurt to plan and start to prep for that. And if we don't get it done before mud hits, it could we could dust off those plans a few weeks later, maybe a month or two later in April and, and May when clear ground uh, is um, the weather conditions for the German forces and then conduct that operation. All right, so what does this mean? towards future objectives. 
we now have Stellino and we'll have this industrial region. We're definitely going to displace, if not in circle, we will displace the defending forces. They're pretty strong here, stacked up, and they got some reserves, a little defense in depth, and some more defenders coming in, operational reserves. Rostov has some operational reserves as well. However, future op objectives, Voroshilovgrad and also Rostov are well within striking distance for 1943 and we'll have this industrial network those three cities there as well as potentially Kursk Orel and we are threatening Vyazma here so there's a number of victory points that could be coming in for the Germans and where are we at right now? I don't think it's changed much. 196. I don't think this includes Stalino. In fact, I know it doesn't because we're at 196 for the past couple of turns. Now we have Stalino. I think it's 19 victory locations. So that will be added to the tally, putting us over 200. And then there's 12 between these two cities north of Stalino. Rostov is a solid 19. 17. Okay, I'm sorry. One of these I thought was 19. Oh, Stalino was, was 19. Not insignificant victory, lo, uh, victory points taking this network of cities, which are very uh, achievable for the Germans. Don't know what the Soviets are going to do. How are they going to patch up? Because the might of the 11th Army is finally, finally reaching the front. Oh boy, about a month now. It's just been... Our infantry divisions lurching forward, trying to catch up to the Soviets, attacking when they arrive at the front, and it's just been catch up, catch up, and they're just some stragglers. Look at all the way down here, we have 54th Infantry Corps that was all the way down to the Crimea, making its way, and they're only moving 40, 50, 60 miles a week, so it's taking a long time to get back to the front. But they are arriving, and they will definitely be in place for the spring summer offensive of 1943. With that said, once we have all of our forces arrayed, rested, I don't know how the Soviets are going to contend with the combat power we have available to us in the south, as well as defending what will be four strong Panzer Corps, as well as strong infantry divisions from Smolensk down to really, Kharkov, we could array our Panzer Corps anywhere in here and achieve a significant breakout at any time, I believe, once spring hits. And this is a target as well. The forces between Arel and Kursk, they're pretty strong. Looking at maybe shifting up a Panzer Corps or two here. That could be in uh, a planning consideration for future ops. But the front is going to straighten out and get a little more organized I believe in the next week or two that said it could be a mess because as the Soviets withdraw and we try to reach them and and follow on their heels there could be an an ugly messy section of the front where we end up being stuck because we can't do anything about it because mud has arrived so we have we're about 80 percent getting our Panzer Corps in place, except the ones that are now in full offensive operations. The 50, 39th and the 3rd, very likely, will be in offensive operations in the next turn or two. We'll see how this plays out. And if not, they will rest and refit behind the line, and we'll get a solid bridgehead over what river is this. Oskoy, the Oskoy River and the Tourette's River. Definitely get solid solid bridgeheads. We already have, I think, bridgeheads that will definitely not be able, the Soviets won't be able to kick us out. And a 20 mile bridgehead here and a 10 mile soon to be, uh, 10 miles soon to be 20, even 30 across the Oskoy River. So, river net, river. Network after river network has to be crossed, but we are achieving bridgeheads for future ops. One other thing I wanted to point out, I did move 
with their own emotive power, the 24th Panzer Corps, the remaining two formations that are attached to 24th, what are they, the 4th and 1st Panzer Divisions, with their own fuel and gas, they were, I believe they were located somewhere down here, yeah, they're actually south of Petrovsk. we made it all the way up to the Kharkov region, and we're going to rest and get some fuel, at least for the next week, and so as we look at that, where we have the 24th, we have the 14th and the 57th, and the 30th, and down further south, the 37th, 38th, and the 31st, Panzer Corps along, we had the 14th up here as well. Did I already say 14th? Anyway, the idea in a basic concept is to have groupings of Panzer Corps ready behind the front to achieve breakouts and turn either north or south with their counterparts to achieve encirclements at potentially anywhere along the front. I want to have that flexibility available to us for 1943. The other course of action is to mass up five or six Panzer Corps and br burst out and achieve a widespread breakout, but I want to destroy Soviet formations, and we could do that maybe having four Panzer Corps and four Panzer Corps spread apart at a greater distance, seeking a larger encirclement, but I, I am pleased how we started out 1942 with smaller encirclements, and those grew and grew, and we had medium to large encirclements towards the end of 1942. So we're going to start off small again, shaping operations, have our Panzer Corps poised to rupture the Soviet's front and look either north or south where their comrades have achieved a similar breakout and form a wing, either the northern wing or the southern wing of encirclements. Have that flexibility available to us. But where are we going to place them? That's still to be determined a little bit. Really along uh, Army Group Center's area of operations because there's a lot of opportunities. Soviets are fairly strong in some sectors, but they cannot defend in great strength everywhere. And it's le that is less and less so. Because really, 3rd, 2nd SS Panzer Corps, just with two motorized formations and supporting uh, infantry divisions. Sorry, a little interruption. As I was saying, 2nd Panzer Corps achieved a little bit of a breakout here, so we're keeping the pressure on the Soviets, and if we start to align our Panzer Corps across the front in choice sectors, I believe we can get some more encirclements in 1943, similar to how we kicked off 1942 once it finally started. And there are a lot less Soviets in 1943 than there were in 1942. On that note, before we hit next turn, let's click on losses. 20,000, not bad for the ferocity of the attacks that took place this turn. Almost reached 100,000 for Soviet casualties and manpower, but this jumps out. A couple of those formations that had stuck their neck out and we surrounded and f were forced to surrender, they had a decent sized tank force complement to them and we reached 767 losses that we inflicted on the Soviets this turn. It's almost up to 40,000 tank losses. And again, we're marching towards 10 million losses caused to the Soviets. So not bad, 767,000. A couple of those also, I believe, were routed tank corps, routed tank divisions or mechanized divisions of theirs, or shattered, which caused significant losses to their tanks. All right, I believe we are ready for next turn. All right, let's do it.
It's going to be a grind. Look at that. Ten miles away from Viasma. Oh, I painted a pretty picture. Viasma in Moscow there. Not too far away from Moscow. region. There goes an encirclement idea. I'll take the territory though at this stage. It has been a bitter, cold, relentless, exhausting winter offensive for the Germans. And fighting has been ferocious. So if they want to give up some of those cities without a fight, some territory without a fight, we'll take it at this point. And don't look like they're giving up Orel or Kursk. And we go getting bombed. War in the East 2. Pre-ordered War in the East 2. And I'm so incredibly excited. Doesn't look like it's going to come be available later in April. So that will give us ample time to finish this War in the East. Letting 
had in the Crimea was the withdrawal. The Soviets have to be mindful. We could achieve... Without taking money back, should they continue to draw to allow us to get some of the cities that are increased? There they are. There are our Romanians. Now they retreated from Romanians. What? Has the spirit been sapped? Russian army, they did not attack Romanians when they had the chance. Alright, losses. Less than, oh, just at 10,000. Amazing, 39. No attacks. I don't remember a single attack during this turn. That has to be a first. What is the weather? Snow, blizzard, blizzard. Okay. We'll have some snow conditions. A little less negative for offensive operations. Further to the south. Let's take a look. Starting with the Crimea this time instead of going north. I don't want to jinx ourselves though. Yes! <laughs> Romanian army! Full force! Invading the Crimea. I don't know what the Soviets are going to do here. Do they have the troops to really put up a resistance? Maybe. It wouldn't be too hard to at least hold off the Romanians. Because they don't have the greatest combat power. But the Romanians are going to be a nuisance. They are going to grind away at the Soviets where they can get favorable combat resolutions. Strong core here. Weaker division here. Interesting. Wow, there was at least a partial withdrawal. Well, a major withdrawal, actually. They're just holding a blocking core here. Slow us down a little bit in here and here. But withdrawing across the front. Wow, 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 wow. Well, really, it doesn't make much difference how far east the Soviets go back in some of these regions because it's just all open step. Nothing to be gained except... Uh, the art of maneuver to get encirclements, no real objectives. Until we go to, we get farther east to Verones, which could be an objective. But uh, the objective will be to destroy Soviets again. And again and again. Orel, no, they are defending Orel in strength that they can muster. But pulling back, pulling back. Did they? Yeah, they preempted all designs of attacking from the north here and the south here and encircling the Soviets. So, all right. it's all right, though. We'll take these cities without much of a fight and rake in more victory points and allow us an easy path east, at least till we reach the Soviets, where they are starting to assemble a defensive line and now start to threaten Rostov in Voroshilograd. More victory locations to consider. Kursk, still pretty strong, but it's fragmented. They are withdrawing in it. Not the best order. We'll take advantage of these seams, these cracks. We'll try to pick off some of these straggling Soviet divisions. And I was curious how far east they would withdraw in front of Moscow. We're backing them up. Viasma. That's probably ridiculously strong too, but we'll come abreast and take Viasma, if not next turn, the week later. Velikai Luki. It's starting to assemble in the mountains, so it's going to be very tough to dig them out, so we will just screen this part of the front and push through here, looking to take Ryzev. And further north, what changes occurred here? Just 
establishing a defensive line where the Soviets can thinner and thinner. Did they really push the core here? Wow. All right. So that's what it looks like at the third week of February 1943. Still opportunity in front of the Germans, but we're looking to tidy things up and get prepared in primary positions with our Panzer Corps to kick off the spring and summer 1943 offensive. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is First Fire, non-assault move out.